This video is sponsored by SouthVPN. Do you need VPN? Is the government out to get you? Are you trying to play Warships Legends Mobile, and you're not in Canada? Then SouthVPN can help you. Follow the link in the description to get the first month free. Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking once more at the Elbing, the uh, German Tier 10 Scout Cruiser. Now I'm calling this a Scout Cruiser, even though in the game it's actually listed as a destroyer, because of the way it plays, and obviously because of the armament, because the Elbing has very very special guns. These are, if we look at it, 150mm, 60 caliber length, uh, cruiser guns pretty much. She gets six of them and these are probably the hardest hitting 150s that you will find in the game. They are having so much power behind them that they're actually rather useless at destroy against destroyers at close range because they will simply just over penetrate them. Even against things like Smolensks you at closer ranges can, can have trouble uh, getting actual hits in rather than just shooting straight through the ship. Which means the Elbing requires a very special playstyle, and this is why I wanted to try the ship out again. Because uh, the Elbing, the Elbing's 150 mils, if you are, especially if you're boosting them with the APCS, are perfectly capable of penetrating a battleship deck armor and score citadel hits. Now, while that sounds fascinating, uh, these are 150s, so the citadel factor is going to be 150%, which means you're going to do around about 900 points of damage, which is still nice for a single hit, and it, it kind of feels good to make these citadel hits, but it's not doing an, a huge amount of difference in terms of in terms of overall damage. The Elbing also gets, uh, as, is, as is traditional for this line, the uh, sea mines. So what are these? Uh, 50, yeah, 50 knots, 533 millimeter. Uh, torpedoes, they do however have a very good range of almost 11 kilometers and they do a, a reasonable amount of damage as well. So why did I want to try the ship again? I wanted to try what happens if you put the APCS plus and if you manual aim because if you do if you if you use the, uh, the automatic tracking, the lock on, the auto aim, whatever you want to call it, a lot of the Elbing's shots will go into, especially against uh, uh, battleships, will go into the belt armor and bounce off. Because um, they, while they have very, very good penetration for 150s, they don't have enough penetration to punch through battleship belt armor. And that's where it kind of gets tricky for me, because uh, I find manual aim to be difficult on a phone screen. So I wanted to see... Uh, especially at long range, I wanted to see what I could do with manual aim with an Elbing and if it would, it would if it would vastly change uh, my, my perception of it. For that, I have set up the Elbing with historical camo. Uh, I've got a I've got the main battery mod two uh, for reload, and I've got the concealment module in slot three. The maneuverability isn't great, but then again, this is not a, not a dogfighter for two reasons. First of all. Um, you're going to over penetrate destroyers anyway and second of all you really don't have the maneuverability for it so she's better played at long range and these guns have a very good range as a commander i have got von Spee in here the legendary commander and i am using the sixth sense skill which is really useful as an indicator to tell you when you need to smoke up because uh, you will see that in the games but it, it really helps you can be staying focused on the target, which you kind of have to with these rapid firing guns. You don't have 20 seconds time between sh between salvos to wait for a reload, and then uh, and then you know look around and figure out where the threats are coming from. So this really really helps staying focused and staying on target. Uh, he does get the improved preheating. He does get an improved daredevil, and he does get an improved mist weaver, which is really nice because these things get smoke screens. And most importantly, he does get the armor piercing cap shell plus for a 7.5% uh, AP penetration and a 15% sustainability, which means they don't lose penetration over over flight as much as they otherwise would. So, 
uh, here we are in the Elbing, and um, let's go. Let's go for a couple of rounds and and see if the whole manual aiming sort of setup on with 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 my personal <laughs> skills or lack thereof and on the small screen is viable and if it makes if it makes a difference in the overall you know results that you get out of the ship. The first battle we're playing is a domination on fault line and it's a 4v4. We're playing against Izumo, Zhao, Nevsky and Gearing. Off we go. Um, scout cruisers are a bit different. <laughs> Especially if they have the destroyer classification, you'd be very tempted to, you know, rush the cup and pretend you're a destroyer. You're not. You're supposed to be playing more like a light cruiser. Okay, I have got uh, some support here, and we'll, we'll, it doesn't mean that you don't head into the cup, but uh, it does mean that you don't necessarily want to take point as being the first one in there. Also, because you don't have a sonar, and you don't have the capability of. Um, of dealing with destroyers very easily at close ranges. So we're just going to poke our nose into the cup. There's this very convenient ledge there around A cup where we can go. What we can do, however, is drop some torpedoes because as you can see on the minimap, my torpedoes have a range to cover the whole of A cup. So I could uh, poke my nose out there, predictively drop 10 torpedoes in there where I'm reasonably certain I know enemies, enemy ships are going to come from. And even though I'm a scout cruiser, I'm still going to be able to outspot that Zao over there. So I'm not dropping the torpedoes, I'm just dropping smoke at this point to see where the Zhao is going. Now Zhao has torpedoes himself. Uh, I think he is in the turn, so let's see if he continues on that turn. And he has maybe not paid attention. And yeah, this is what you can do with these guns against cruisers. And it, I've, even got the, I've even got the lock on here, but against cruiser armor I can totally punch through. And I think the Zhao is just about to eat a whole bunch of these torpedoes. So uh, that has gone... That could have gone better. There's a bot Fletcher, but uh, I am going to just be wary of where the Zao torpedoes go. And he here you kind of see what happens when you're using the armor piercing against destroyers. Now, I do have a Venezia with me, uh, which should, means that should be a... Okay, the Venezia has just run into all the Zao torpedoes. So I'm going to have to kill that, that thing. You actually do have to switch to the high explosive at close ranges. But uh, the, the, the poison over there just took him out. So that's that uh, dealt with, and that's this cup uh, organized. Um, if there is no opposition, you can totally, you know, take capture circles. But generally, what you want to do is be a little bit more at long range. And that's also where, again, the manual aim then comes in, especially against stationary battleships. This ship is very good at um, unleashing, unleashing, unleashing unpleasantness at enemy battleships at range where you get plunging fire into the deck, especially with manual aim. The difficulty, again, for me with uh, manual aim on a, on a phone screen is uh, you don't get the same magnification, which is really uh, which is really irritating. And I find it, especially on a moving target, sometimes quite hard to, uh, to, keep, to keep the guns on point. But uh, it, it, is, it is kind of what you need to do to make the ship, apparently, from what I've heard, uh, make the ship really work. We're holding two caps. Uh, we have one kill down. There is the Izumo, that is a player. So uh, this is where I'm switching off the auto aim and we're starting to unload at the Izumo. And I am trying to uh, to aim for the deck plating here and uh, trying to go for the Citadel. Now you could also just go for bow and stern, but uh, as you can see, these guns are perfectly capable of punching through the deck. I am being targeted by one enemy ship, which is, uh, which is, not, uh, which is not super concerning at this point. So uh, unless I will actually start see seeing some incoming fire here, um, then I can just smoke up. And there you see. So I uh, was starting to score Citadel hits on the Izumo. And uh, these guns are doing a lot of damage. So you, you, you're aiming sort of at the, at the upper end of the upper belt. And there you go. You can just punch right through the, the deck armor of the battleship with the shells that get there and score very, very reliable Citadels on these things. And uh, poison takes him out. Okay, there is. That's oh, just a body bookie. Okay, never mind that thing. Let's kill that as well. And there it goes. Uh, that leaves the Nevsky. Now, Nevsky is a little bit dangerous, but. Um, so I don't want to necessarily sit on broadside to that, although I do have for a destroyer a relatively large hit pool. A hit point pool. Let's see if we, we just drop some torpedoes in case he comes around the island, but I think poison just goes. Nah. <laughs> Well, we'll kill it. Okay, then. Well, we'll kill that then. And that just leaves the player gearing. Now, you you can... that That's where you kind of really want the HE, especially if you're getting into a close range fight. Now, uh, at this range, 
I could have just opened up the range a little bit, and um, but I figured the gearing would uh, would leave after he dropped his torpedo into the poison. I don't think that's going to sink the poison, however. So uh, at that range, uh, the HE is doing some damage. It, it does more damage than the than the uh, than the armor piercing on overpens. But the the alternate the other alternative is to just literally open up the distance, and oh, there he is, went out from his smoke. Open up the distance and. Uh, and yeah, poison gets him. And then, even against destroyers, you will you will do full penetrations. So that was a relatively quick one. And uh, poison has just um, taken um, has taken the lead there. But uh, gives you gives you a little bit of an impression what you can do in a battle that has fewer uh, team members because these tend to be a lot more fluent. And, uh, but you see how much damage we've done with the guns. These guns hit, and they hit very, very hard. So what if you have a bit more of a static setup with a full team? We are on Typhoon's Eye, again in a domination battle. And we're up against Slava, Mecklenburg, Montana, Smolensk, Double Shima, and Gearing. So off we go. First thought, I'm in a German destroyer. I'm going to go destroyer hunting. Not the right ships for this. Uh, this is actually a much better counter against battleships, to be to be to be honest, and not in a I'll oh, just run up to them and torpedo them because she's not particularly quick, but she is maneuverable enough at long range to just um, uh, to just kill them with the 150s. So we'll head regardless. We'll head into we'll head into uh, C cup and make ourselves useful there. Uh, you do have three smoke screens. And we might be able to reach the other capture circle from over here, but uh, I think uh, we can we can get we can still get inside the capture circle and then torpedo between the two islands there. You can really use these extremely long-range torpedoes quite well uh, for uh, for predictive or for area denial. And we see that there is something in B cups, probably one of the destroyers, given that there are three of them. So I'm sending the torpedoes in the general direction because by now I can actually cover B cup with my torpedo range from here, and then I forget about them, slow down a little bit, and let the gearing take point, because he's a lot more maneuverable than I am. And I don't want to get too close to enemy destroyers. However, that is an enemy battleship, and that is something, if I can get my eyes on it... Uh, ha, no, no, I take that back, there's a Smolensk. <laughs> Smolensk! So we'll smoke up for now. Uh, this smoke isn't so much for me, but for the Petro behind me, uh, just in case he starts coming under fire, and I've got three smokes, I might as well start using them. And it looks like the Petro is not interested to go into the smoke. So let's see if we can get some shots onto that Smolensk over there. Uh, I don't necessarily need to lead a little bit more. Against the cruiser, I'm going to keep the lock on. And we have managed to get one torpedo hit in uh, at, from our predictive torpedoes at the, other, at the other capture circle. And yeah, as you can see, uh, these guns, even at, even at almost 12 kilometer range, are doing an absolute number on that Smolensk. So, a uh, very, very dangerous uh, ship against even even something like that. But I am coming under under fire from that Mecklenburg over there, so manual aim on. And I'm also taking some fire from the rear. Uh, we get the torpedoes out in the general direction of that Monty over there. And uh, and then get ourselves a little bit out of range because I was taking fire from, the, from behind. So let's make sure that we only have one ship shooting at us at the same time. Maybe we can go behind the island. Nope, can't quite. There is Shima. Uh, this range, I, I think my guns are not over penetrating Shima. So let's give let's give some support. Yeah, that uh, that hurts. So these guns are really really good at long at long range. Uh, at close range against uh, very light targets, not so much. Our team is clustering up a little bit here, but no one's died so far. It's been a very static positional battle, and this is sort of more the the game style where uh, a scout cruiser like the Elbing is shining. I'm not 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 getting anywhere with that Shimakaze. So let's get ourselves back into range of a couple of things and uh, see if we can deter uh, deter enemy ships. But yeah, that that gearing, the Petro is is doing the the right thing, and uh, that gearing is I think going to be pushed away. So let's help where we can, and then we will see what we can do on this flank again because we haven't really sp we haven't really spotted any of the battleships in the enemy team that are sitting at range. We've got two ships targeting me. There was a Shima to my right, so let's slow down. I don't want to run into any Shima torps. Uh, smoke, screen, smoke screen up because I've got two ships targeting me, so I may as well just use it. I think we've spotted the Smolensk again, so uh, that's again priority target. And uh, for that, we, we're going to use the lock on again. 
I just do need to be a little bit careful. Uh, I think I'm outside the torpedo range of that thing, but the, the only thing that I really don't like about the Elving is the, the gun placement, because she's got the she's got the two-thirds of the firepower in the rear, and I think Smolensk is about to smoke up, so he might get away with that, unless we can blind fire him a little bit more. And we might be able to take him down if we're lucky. Yeah, so if you bow in, you don't have an or if you're rushing something, you don't have a lot of firepower. You're actually better, better off kiting away. We have lost the destroyer on our side, but uh, otherwise the battle is completely even. And yes, we're over to, we're over penetrating the Smolensk. Uh, we'll still we'll still keep trying, but now we have a Montana over here, which still has a decent amount of hit points. So let's get some torpedoes in his general direction. Uh, these are just to deter him and uh, slow down, manual aim on, and see what we can do against the Montana. Uh, we're going for these going for these deck hits. Uh, you, you could try to you could try to hit the um, and I'm, again I'm just being targeted by one ship. I know it's the Montana, so I know where the fire is coming from. So I don't need to use a smoke screen. Uh, if you get, if you can have the, if you can have the precision to uh, to hit the bow section or stern section, that also works pretty well. But as you can see, every time I'm hitting the belt, uh, it's a bounce. So you really, really need to be precise, and that's where I'm kind of struggling with the small screen. Okay, I don't know where that Shima went, but I'm risking it. I'm gonna go for that Monty. I will know if the Shima is targeting me because then my sixth sense is going to go off. And this is what I was trying to say. Uh, the Having two two ship having that uh, on a ship where you need to really stay on target, and you can see that the 150s are absolutely shredding that Monty Citadel or not. Uh, if you if you need if you need to keep your guns on target, then uh, the then the sixth sense is extremely helpful. Now there is a Mecklenburg, but I'm assuming the Mecklenburg has other, has other problems. And again, it's not targeting me. I know that because sixth sense, so I can uh, peacefully rush that Monty who's in reverse. And I think it's still firing armor piercing at me, which uh, is not probably gonna. I mean, it might work. It's almost a cruiser, but I don't have a citadel, and he'd probably be better off with uh, with a high explosive. So let's see if we can shoot his guns off, or just generally try to get some shots into his deck. Uh, and now we're just gonna add insult to injury, and um, and I'm, I'm starting to over penetrate Montana, I believe. Uh, smoke up and uh, just casually gun him down from here. We can go and drop some torpedoes because I think the game is. Pretty much decided until these, unless these two destroyers are going to be able to do something. So yeah, shots into the bow section are obviously more guaranteed damage, but not going to give you the satisfying citadels. And uh, I'm still trying to uh, see if I can hit his gun turrets, but he's also wiggling, which isn't helping. He's taken a torpedo. I think he's going to take another one or two, which means he's not going to be shooting at me because he's busy dodging torpedoes, which is one good use for the sea mines. And now I think we'll just finish him off with the guns from here. Uh, still firing armor piercing and uh, these shots got a little low I need to aim a little bit higher but that's because of the, you see the auto aim right this is what the auto aim does it drags your shells down towards the belt and you're actually not really not really getting anywhere and I would have loved to farm that Slava for all he's worth but unfortunately the battle is over so I'm gonna have to content myself with uh, with with the damage that we've done uh, so Elbing um, it's a niche ship. You need to, you need to know how to play scout cruisers. You need to play from long range. You need to let go of the notion that you're a destroyer hunter because you're not. You're actually more a counter for battleships and other cruisers. Uh, you need the long range also in order to dodge because the ship is relatively large and relative and for a destroyer not the most maneuverable. But uh, the guns are absolutely vicious. And uh, especially with something like APCS or APCS Plus, can easily score citadels on battleships at six, seven kilometers, or even at longer ranges. I've, I've done a consistent, uh, consistent citadels on Vermonts at ten kilometers without too much of a problem. So, very, very dangerous ship, but also somewhat niche ship. And uh, once you, once she gets out of her comfort zone, and you know you need to, uh, you need you need to go and, and dominate capture circles and do things like that, it can get a little tricky. But that's where the torpedoes as well come in. And the torpedoes work really well at keeping the enemies at a range where your guns, uh, where your guns are effective. So that's actually, in my opinion, almost the best use of these torpedoes. Don't even try to be a torpedo boat. Just use the torpedoes to push enemy ships away and keep them at arm's length and then finish them off with the guns. 
So if you're into that, and if that sounds appealing to you, and you're um, feeling that this is your niche, then I think this is definitely a, a line that is worth grinding. But uh, if you're more of a general purpose destroyer player, uh, this is much more like a light cruiser to and play it at, at long range, then um, it might not it might be too specialized. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.